Welcome, everyone. I am so excited to be with you. I have been working on this new content for almost two years and just thrilled to bring it to you. So tonight, I'm really going to unveil my new book, Your Brain is Always Listening. And we're going to talk about, about the first quarter of it, where I'm going to teach you about really the major psychological issues people come to Amen Clinics for. Uh, I'm going to use it is an analogy, the dragons from the past that are still breathing fire on your emotional brain. Um, I'll give you a sneak peek of what else is in the book and give you a lot of practical tips and tools to use because you know we are in this historically um, difficult time. And I remember when the pandemic started for me, I would basically finished the book, um, but ended up rewriting a lot of it. I was actually on a book tour for my last book, The End of Mental Illness, which I just deeply loved. And I was in my bathroom on March 10th. Uh, getting ready to go to New York City. Uh, we had scanned Mel Robbins. I uh, was going to be on her show. The whole show was going to be about her scan and my book. And I got a call from the producer who said, don't come. We're closing the studio. And I remember writing down that night Mental hygiene is just as important as washing your hands. We need to disinfect our thoughts and tame the dragons that drive anxiety, depression, addiction, stress, and bad habits. And that night, I also wrote down this term, pandemic squared, that this pandemic, if not handled properly, would actually spawn another pandemic, a mental health pandemic, which indeed it did. Uh, depression has tripled, anxiety disorders has skyrocketed, suicide like we have never seen in the 32 years we've been working at Amen Clinics. Um, th this is really an important time. Um, and so I use the analogy, the dragons from the past that still breathe fire on your emotional brain. And so I'm going to show you a number of the dragons tonight. Um, March 16th, if we fast forward a week, I was on the phone with one of my patients. You'll know her, Miley Cyrus. Uh, Miley went public last year that I've been her doctor for about 10 years, and I dearly love her. Um, and like everyone else, she was freaking out. And her dragons, especially the anxious dragon and the death dragon, were breathing fire on her brain. And she's asking me questions like, how long will the virus live on packages? Remember that? And everybody was completely freaked out about the virus and packages. And over about an hour that night, um, I walked her back from the ledge and we used the tools that she had already learned to tame the dragons. And she asked me if the next day I would go live on her Instagram uh, to her 105 million fans, which I did. And then she started a whole series called Bright Minded. So I was just so proud of her. And a number of the other celebrities that I worked with to go public about their challenges just to normalize uh, that no matter how fortunate you are, this is still a historically anxious, upsetting time. And then if we fast forward to April 17th, my mom and dad became celebrities and they were on the front cover 
of the Orange County Register. And I was uh, so grateful. Both of them got COVID. Uh, my mom got better. Uh, I put her on hydroxychloroquine, which, you know, at the time that was the best that we knew. And it seemed to work for her. And even though my dad came home from the hospital, that's why I made the cover of the Orange County Register, he, he never really got better, even with hydroxychloroquine. And um, he was sleeping 14 hours a day. So he had this thing we now call long COVID and his star heart stopped beating on May 5th. And at that time, you see behind me, the grief and lost dragons uh, just breathe fire on my brain. So, um, you know, some people look at me and it's like, oh, he has everything. And, and it's like, I have all the same feelings that you have. Um, so this program, this book is needed now more than ever before. All of us are stressed, anxious, depressed. As I said, depression has at least tripled. It was 8% of the general population last February. And by August, it was 28%. Um, in my lifetime, we've never seen a change like that. Substance abuse is up, suicide is up, divorce and family issues are skyrocketing. Now, that's not to say that there's not a silver lining because there is. Parents have more time with children than ever before. Uh, but we are in a historically stressful time. So in the book, um, I talk about the dragons from the past. And here are 13 dragons. We're not going to talk about all 13 tonight, but we'll talk a bit about the abandoned, invisible, and insignificant dragon. That's my primary dragon, being that I'm one of seven, and I'm a middle child, and I have five sisters and an older brother, which means completely expendable. <laughs> um, there's the inferior flawed dragon, which we'll talk about, the anxious dragon, the wounded dragon, the shouldn't shaming dragon, which we're not going to talk about. But the take home answer here is guilt is just a bad motivator of behavior. Whenever you think you should do something, um, replace it with I want to or it fits my goals to. The special and spoiled dragon, the responsible dragon, so common. One of the most common where you feel like you have to take care of other people. Uh, my wife Tana's dragon, the judgmental dragon, where you just know the world would be better if they did what you asked them to do. The angry dragon, uh, the grief and loss dragon, which we'll talk about. The death dragon, which is just everywhere. Now, it's, think of it like Godzilla pounding around the globe. The hopeless and helpless dragon that drives depression. And the ancestral dragon. I actually had a conversation with someone today about the ancestral dragon. It's where the issues you have aren't yours. That they belong to your mother or to your grandfather. We're going to talk about that. Also in the book... Uh, Oh, how you know your dragons? We actually developed a quiz for you. You can go to knowyourdragons.com, and in six or seven minutes, you'll know which of the 13 dragons you have. The average number is six. So if you get six dragons, it doesn't mean you're messed up. It means you're average. You're like, the rest of us. Uh, some people have 10 or 12 dragons, at which point you probably come see us at Heyman Clinics and work on taming them. But for sure, the book will help you. The book is just so simple and e easy to access. I think that's what people have told me through the years. One of my gifts is to take complex information and to make it easy to understand. So go to knowyourdragons.com. And then we're not going to talk about it tonight. We may actually set up other events to talk about the they, them, 
and other dragons. So your brain is always listening to other people in your life, past and present. My brain still listens to my dad and my grandfather, even though they're both dead. Um, and you have your dragons and you're always interacting with other people who have their dragons. And so if you don't really tame your dragons, it can become like a modern day game of thrones and all out war can be problematic. So their parents, you know, obviously I still listen to my mom's voice, siblings and birth order. Did you know that middle children are the most monogamous, that the oldest and only children get on average 3,000 more hours of parenting than the other kids. So early on, their IQs tend to be higher and they talk earlier and walk earlier, uh, but we catch up. Uh, children dragon, any of you who have children know you always have their voice in your head, whether they're talking or not. The teacher and coach dragon, the friends, Popular kids, mean girls, bullies, former, current, and prospective lovers, the internet trolls. So you'll see hateful comments in the scroll tonight. It always happens. Uh, and it's actually one good thing about dying. That's how you deal with the death dragon. You come up with a list. What are the good things about dying? No more internet troll dragons. And the faceless society dragons, that's the they dragons. In the book, there's a whole section on how to deal with your bad habits. Your brain is always listening to the bad habit dragons. These are habits that result from dragon influences and increase the chances you'll be overweight and depressed and have brain fog. So the yes, yes, yes dragon, where you reflexively say yes when you really should say, I have to think about it. Or you know these people. No, no, no. No matter what it is you say, they argue with you. Um, or the interrupting dragon. They don't let you finish like half of your sentence and they've already interrupted you. Or trouble with the truth. Um, the oblivious dragon where you never read food labels. You just don't know what you put in your body or on your body. You have no idea how many calories a day you eat. I mean, you're just sort of oblivious to your health. Um, distracted procrastination, disorganization. Uh, one of my favorite bad habit dragons is let's have a problem. These are people who are always poking other people, but it's not good for you. And the overeater bad habit dragon, 72% of the population in America is overweight. I published three studies that show as your weight goes up, the actual physical size and function of your brain goes down, which should scare the fat off anyone. And then I have a whole section in the book on the scheming dragons. These are societal influences that steal your mind, your money, and your children from food, food pushers. The unhealthy health dragons are really interesting because they appear like they're healthy, but they're really not. Um, the substance use, whether it's uh, drug abuse or even doctors that are prescribing Xanax like candy, the toxin pushers. And I worry about this during the pandemic because everywhere you go, there's hand sanitizer. I want you to know the ingredients in those and are they really good for you or not? So natural uh, product companies uh, making hand sanitizers, you know, I'm just a huge fan of those. The digital dragons, they're just completely stealing the minds of our children pornography, negative news, social media, contact sports. We just came off of the Super Bowl. And the big lesson for me in the Super Bowl, I mean, there's just no question. I did the big NFL study um, a long time ago. We scanned and treated 300 players. Playing football is a brain-damaging sport. Just own it. We, we shouldn't even have that discussion. The science is really clear. Yet... If you're gonna do something dangerous, you should do everything else right. 
And um, Tom Brady, who's 43, was the Super Bowl MVP. He played amazing. He does everything else right. If you actually look at his routines, he's a brain warrior. He knows how to rehabilitate his brain. And, uh, you know, quite frankly, there are people that are going to play football. If you're going to do that, you need to be putting your brain constantly in a healing environment. If you are um, in a job that is potentially brain damaging firefighters, police officers, uh, I've worked with many of both, um, head trauma, emotional trauma, and for firefighters, toxic exposure, they should be putting their brains in a healing environment all the time. And then the holiday dragons, it's like, well, it's Halloween, so I should have all this candy, or it's Thanksgiving, I should gorge, or it's Christmas, and we should celebrate Christ's birth with bad food. And I'm like, no. Um, we, we ran a weight loss group a number of years ago uh, and started December 1st, and the average weight loss was two and a half pounds the week of Christmas. You do not have to gain weight and be bad for your brain during the holidays. There's a whole section on ants because the ants feed the dragons. So those of you who follow my work know many years ago I coined the term automatic negative thoughts, ants. The ants that infest your mind and steal your happiness. You don't have to believe every stupid thing you think. And then um, to finish the book, um, I write about the addicted dragons. And while I was writing it, I realized that the traditional AA programs or all of the anonymous programs, sex addiction, cocaine addiction, narcotics addiction, alcoholics anonymous, um, or sex anonymous, uh, so on, was developed 85 years ago. And if you look at the 12 steps, there's no neuroscience in any of the steps. And so I reimagined the 12 steps, keeping some of them, because some of them are great, but from a neuroscience perspective. So I think this would be worth an event all by itself. Um, but you'll notice step number three is you have to heal the brain. And step number five is you have to know, well, what type of addict am I? Am I an impulsive addict, a compulsive addict, a sad addict, an anxious addict? Um, looking at the brain. And I realize I didn't introduce myself, so I'm hoping you read my bio. But Daniel Amen, and I'm a psychiatrist. I'm the CEO and founder of Amen Clinics. I am also the CEO and founder of BrainMD, which is a ridiculously fast-growing nutritional uh, supplement company. And uh, Amen Clinics holds the world's largest database of brain scans related to behavior. We've done 170,000 scans on patients from 150 countries. We have nine clinics around the United States. We have a brand new one in Dallas, but Bellevue, Washington, San Francisco Bay Area, Los Angeles, Orange County, Chicago, New York, Washington, D.C., Atlanta. Um, what I'm telling you is not something I just thought up. It's something based on what is now 40 years of helping people get their brains and their minds healthy. So for each of the dragons of the past tonight, we're going to talk about their origin story or how they came about, what triggers them, how they cause you to react, and how to tame them. Tan and I also have a brand new public television special that's going to start airing nationwide called Overcoming Anxiety, Depression, Trauma, 
and grief. And it's based on her new book, The Relentless Courage of a Scared Child, which if you haven't seen it, I encourage you to look at it. And then my new book, Your Brain is Always Listening. The book also for each of the dragons gives their upside. So I told you this is my primary dragon. And the upside is it leads me to be purposeful and make a difference in others um, to feel significant. And for this live event, we had 16,000 people sign up. And I love that. I love being able to take what I've learned and share it with you. Each of the dragons also has meditations. Uh, and for this dragon, I am loved. I am unique. I am significant. I am seen. Uh, I'm making a difference in the lives of others. Um, and if I meditate on that, it just tames the dragon so it doesn't have to cause trouble in my life. So I want to... Um, start with a story, and I open the book with this story. Jimmy, 39, when he first came to see me, he's the son of a major Mexican mob figure uh, in a major city in America. And uh, he had been suicidal in a psychiatric hospital, and the day he got out of the hospital, he came to see me. Um, it's a high-level business executive. I'd been doing work in their company. Severe anxiety, panic attacks, and dread, especially after he was asked to speak in public. And this is a quote. If I had to describe the fear, it's like you're on death row and the clocks run out. The guard opens the door and you must take the first step. That kind of fear runs through my bones. He had something called glossophobia, which is the fear of speaking in public, since at the age 12, his grandmother made him give an impact statement when his father was on trial for a double murder. What if I cannot speak and end up killing my dad? And that thought had still gotten stuck in his brain. And his brain was filled with ants, automatic negative thoughts. I can't speak in public, so I'm going to lose my job. And this is the ants often link. I'm going to be afraid of interviewing, so I won't be able to get a new job. I'm a loser. My wife will divorce me. I'll end up on the streets. I should kill myself. And, you know, through our work, we taught him how to eliminate the ants. And if you eliminate the first one, they don't link to this awful conclusion. He had intense, persistent trauma. He watched his father deal drugs and assault others. When he was eight, SWAT officers stormed into his, restaurant, into his apartment, broke down the door with their guns drawn. When visiting his dad in prison, his dad made him go up to other notorious gang leaders to test his mettle. He witnessed drive-by shootings, was in car chases before the age of nine. He was kidnapped twice by feuding family members. His mother kept his siblings, but sent him to live with his grandparents. He felt abandoned. He witnessed his grandmother being raped, and while they were raping her, they asked him if he wanted to participate. Just imagine the horror of the traumas. His ancestral dragons, he was loaded on both sides with anxiety, depression, and drug abuse. He had bad habit dragons, loved watching violent movies, boxing, UFC fights, execution, and animal fights. So he was initially turned on, thrilled, excited uh, by watching violence that he hated. You can see how that got stuck in his brain. And 
at Amen Clinics, we also think you have a brain. You know, we actually think in four big circles. I'll show you them in a second. But he had head injuries playing football. He was a all-conference linebacker. He boxed during high school. Bad for your brain. At 15, he fell eight feet onto his head and was knocked unconscious. He lost his hearing and had to relearn to walk again. He used drugs and alcohol as a teen and young adult to cope. So here are the four circles. Whenever we assess or evaluate someone at Amen Clinics, we're always thinking of what's going on with their brain, which is why we do brain spect imaging, why we look at the brain. How do I know what's going on in your head unless I look at your brain? But we also want to know what's going on in their mind and think of the dragons that are really messing with your mind. There's a social circle, how you get along with others, so their dragons mixed with your dragons. And there's the spiritual circle that is just so important on why you care. What is your deepest sense of meaning and purpose? So at Amen Clinics, we do a study called SPECT. SPECT looks at blood flow and activity. It looks at how the brain works. And it basically shows us three things, good activity, too little, or too much. The image on the left, we're looking at the outside surface. This is a healthy scan. And it should just show full, even, symmetrical activity. The image on the right, we're looking at the most active parts of the brain. Blue is average activity. Red and white are the most active parts of the brain. And in Jimmy's scan, he had clear damage to his left temporal lobe, mood instability, irritability, dark thoughts, even suicidal thoughts. Um, and his emotional brain is just on fire in a pattern we call the diamond pattern. It's what we see in people who have post-traumatic stress disorder. And you can see from Jimmy's history, he had a long history of trauma. So with treatment, he thrived over six months. Now, we're actually at about 16 months now. And I'm just so proud of him. He is doing so well. Uh, he got well in large part because he worked really hard, right? I, I'm just not a fan. Take a pill, see me in a month. We'll tame the dragons that way. We'll drug them into submission. No, he really worked hard. He journaled. He did the exercises I asked. I mean, he's, that's why I got better. Um, I gave him medicine for his left temporal lobe. Some people think at Amen Clinics we're opposed to medicine. We're absolutely not opposed to medicine. We're just opposed to that's the first and only thing you do. Um, I gave him supplements to balance his brain, including one I just love called Happy Saffron and Brain and Body Power Max. That was my NFL formula. That's the formula I used to really help rehabilitate uh, brains that were troubled. His mood stabilized, his anxiety lessened, became a better husband and team member at work. He lost 37 pounds. That's often one of the side effects of working with us. He's stronger, more energy, and he started to help his family get well. I was so proud of him. Now, before I get into the dragons, I want to tell you um, about a very special offer we have. Uh, so the book is coming out March 2nd. I want to get this book in the hands of as many people as possible. And so my team uh, developed this great offer that if you pre-order the book, uh, we'll give you four free gifts immediately. So you'll get a playbook where we summarize the book. You know, so many people are like, oh, I can't read. I mean, you get through this summary very quickly. The 12 Principles of Amen Clinics, The Science of Change, and Tiny Habits. I'm a huge fan of the smallest things you can do today that will make the biggest difference. 
six feel better fast techniques, how to know about your dragons, and a guide to supplementing your brain. This is just one of the things. The second thing, on March 17th, I'm going to answer questions from only people who pre-ordered the book. So from this group, I'm going to spend two hours that um, afternoon and early evening answering your questions. One of my favorite gifts is uh, before I did imaging, uh, I used a lot of hypnosis in my practice. I still do. And I made this program, Magnificent Mind with Medical Hypnosis. So this is a $50 value. There are sessions, just like if you were in my office, for anxiety, sleep, chronic pain, weight loss, smoking, and peak performance. Um, and my favorite bonus gift is a free bottle of Happy Saffron. This is something I take every day. It's got 30 milligrams of saffron. Most people don't know. There are 21 randomized controlled trials showing that this dosage of saffron is equally effective as Prozac, Paxil, Effexor, Zoloft, Dimipramine to boost your mood. Yet, there are no side effects. Uh, there are only positive effects. Happy Saffron also has zinc and curcumin. Both of those have been found to help mood. So we'll give you a free coupon for this just by pre-ordering the book. We've already given away a thousand bottles. So time is limited. You want to do it quickly. You get all four of those free gifts. Just pre-order the book anywhere great books are sold. Um, and then go to yourbrainisalwayslistening.com, enter your order number, and you get instant access to the bonuses. Um, so I'm really excited about it. Okay, let's talk about the dragons from the past. And I talked about the abandoned dragon. The dragon that's driving the epidemic of teenage suicide is this dragon. It's the inferior flawed dragon where you feel less than other people, where you feel like you're not enough. And its origin is when you felt inadequate or you felt damaged or you felt less than others in ability and looks and money in relationships. And I used to have this dragon. I think sometimes this dragon still bites me. I'm a middle child. I have an older brother. Um, and in a Lebanese family, if you're number two, you are not special. <laughs> um, and... I mean, there's a huge upside to that, which meant I could do anything I wanted in my life. And my family owns grocery stores, and it really wasn't for me. Um, and so I got to do something that fit what I wanted to do. Um, but I was also the smallest kid in the class, which is sort of irritating. Um, and this dragon is triggered by comparing yourself to others. And you will always find someone taller than you, someone stronger than you, someone better looking than you, someone who has more money than you. And you will always find people that are not as tall as you, that are not as good looking as you, that are not as. But when you bring your attention to what you don't have, um, it triggers this dragon. And social media has just caused an epidemic rise in this dragon um, for our young people. And it's horrifying because teenage suicide is skyrocketing. So how does this dragon cause you to react? You feel inferior. You can get depressed. You can be jealous, overly sensitive, sometimes perfectionistic. Often you can develop something called body dysmorphic disorder where you get obsessed on your flaws. And it really can cause emotional pain for people. Now, the upside of this dragon is if you accept your flaws, you 
can help others. You can be more accepting of others. It also helps you be humble and compassionate. So how do you tame this dragon? Um, I love this rule. I've been talking about this rule for many years called the 1840-60 rule. I want you to remember it. When you're 18, you worry about what everybody's thinking of you. And when you're 40, you don't care what anybody thinks about you. And when you're 60, you realize nobody has been thinking about you at all. People spend their days worrying and thinking about themselves, not you. You want to be aware of when you're comparing yourself and work diligently to stop it. So know your triggers, know what happens, um, know what triggers you to compare, and then change your focus. Focus on your accomplishments. I treated one patient once who had sold 400 million records, 400 million. And yet he was still stuck on some of the negative things that one of the music magazines said about him when he was 16. And he's like 50. And I had him go home and write down his accomplishments. And when he came back, he felt so much better because he's shifting his focus rather than from what is wrong to what is right. Um, also, don't criticize others because the more you criticize others, the more likely you are to criticize yourself. And please avoid mindlessly scrolling social media. For all of the dragons, I have what movies they like. And the inferior flawed dragons, they love X-Men, mutant character movies, because they're flawed characters that have special powers. When you compare yourself negatively to others, you will suffer. And so write this down, post it. Where I bring my attention today will always determine how I feel. The meditations for the inferior flawed dragon, I am unique. I restrain comparing myself to others. I am a strong, independent person. I will be my best, not someone else's best. I work hard. So now let's talk about the most common of all dragons, the anxious dragon. Before the pandemic, this dragon affected 30% of the population. It's the most common one of the first 7,500 people who took the Know Your Dragons questionnaire. Its origins, I mean, you're born with anxiety in your genes. It came from thousands and thousands of years ago when our ancestors were afraid and worked hard every day to survive. And the ones who had a bit of anxiety, they were actually more likely to survive. Uh, people have low levels of anxiety, the don't worry, be happy people. They die the earliest from accidents and preventable illnesses. So some of this is genetic. Um, but it could happen if you were overwhelmed when you were a child, if you felt the world was unpredictable or dangerous. And for the first time in this book, I mean, I talk a lot of personal stuff in this book. And when I was young, I used to wet my bed, I think until I was about nine, which meant every morning I woke up in a panic because I just didn't know. And it was embarrassing. And my mom was great. Um, my dad was always gone because he worked like crazy hours. But my mom was great, but I really hated myself for it. And it, it um, sort of embedded into my nervous system this low level of anxiety. So when I learned hypnosis when I was a young medical student, I just loved it because it helped calm the anxiety. The triggers are 
any reminders of past fears or anxieties and how it, um, I have this slide here for a very specific reason. So any reminders? I love Cat Stevens. It's not a Cat Stevens commercial. I bet, you know, I was a teenager when his music was popular and uh, I loved it. Um, if I play it, my wife screams at me. She hates it. She gets triggered because her uncle, who is a drug addict, like Cat Stevens, and it reminds her of a frightening, scary time. So um, those are the kind of things that can trigger the dragons to bite you, and then in my wife's case, to breathe fire on me. So how does the anxious dragon cause you to react? Panic attacks, fears, phobias, predicting the worst, conflict avoidant, do you become sensitive to rejection? Um, we actually see anxiety. You see the basal ganglia, the anxious dragon is hanging out in some of the fear centers of the brain, the amygdala and basal ganglia often work too hard. And uh, our task then becomes calming it down. So I talk about resetting limbic hyperactivity. And you can do that with relaxing scents. I'm a huge fan of lavender, jasmine, chamomile. Natural supplements, uh, and BrainMD actually makes a number of them. GABA calming. With the pandemic, the sales just skyrocketed. It's got GABA and magnesium. It's a way to just settle down the nervous system. Happy saffron, serotonin mood support for our warriors, and magnesium chewables. If you just chew two of those a day, I was reading a study that showed it actually had uh, significant mood enhancing qualities. And I've used magnesium a lot as a natural way to calm the brain. And it's like 60% of the population is low in magnesium. Now let's talk about the wounded dragon. Very common during this very stressful time. Um, the wounded dragon's origin is whenever you experience trauma. And it could be physical, emotional, or sexual abu abuse, intense stress, such as being in a fire, a flood, an earthquake, or being assaulted. I've been in two major earthquakes, uh, the one in 19... 71 in the San Fernando Valley. I remember like it was yesterday at six o'clock in the morning. The house is shaking like crazy. My five sisters are screaming. And my dad, who was home, um, his booming voice said, don't worry, it's just an earthquake. And they started screaming louder. So <laughs> it was pretty intense. And then I remember the second one, it was 1989. I'm in a family therapy session uh, up in the Bay Area. Our first clinic uh, was in the Bay Area. And this couple is in my office screaming at each other. And then the building starts to shake, just like the one in 1971. And I'm like, you people need to calm down. And they calmed down, and the building continued to shake for another 45 seconds. Uh, that was the one that broke the Bay Bridge. Um, the wounded dragon gets triggered with any past trauma reminders. Smells, sights, sounds, and anniversaries. And I have a wounded dragon. And uh, I had, let's just say, a complicated relationship with my dad, who later, when we talk about him a bit, became one of my best friends. But it's accurate to say we had a complicated relationship. And when I was young, uh, I was five, that's me, and sugar, sugar 
is uh, was my goat, and I loved sugar. Now this story is disturbing. Uh, so if you get upset easily, you might want to just mute this for a second. Um, so sugar was just one of my best friends. Uh, she loved me. You can see her kissing me. Um, we played a lot. This is us running. I don't know how well you see this. Uh, but Sugar also liked my dad's roses. And one day my dad had had enough and sent Sugar away. And I was devastated. Now, I had no idea. I mean, this is a goat. They sent her away to be slaughtered. Um, and a couple of days later at dinner, my dad joked they were feeding us sugar stew. And I remember throwing up, running to my room. I've dealt with this, I promise. Um, but I was really upset and just felt disconnected uh, from my dad after that. And then didn't think about it until years later. I gave a lecture in the Arena Monterey, in Monterey, Mexico. It's a theater that seats like 16,000 people. Actually, the same number of people who signed up for the seminar tonight. And on the streets of Monterey, Mexico, they have goat meat for sale. And after my lecture, I was walking to the hotel, and I saw it. And I had a flashback to that dinner and had a panic attack. And I'm like, trauma can get stuck in your brain. So it can cause you to react with by reliving the trauma, having nightmares, feeling numb, avoiding any situation that reminds you of the event, startling easily, feeling your future is shortened or always watching for bad things to happen. Um, what we often see, and I showed you this in Jimmy's brain, so there's a healthy scan on the left, um, a PTSD scan on the right, where you see that diamond of overactivity. And actually, let's see if I can, this is pointing to the right temporal lobe, we often call it diamond plus, where the right temporal lobe, which is the part of the brain that is watching the intentions of other people, um, becomes too hyperactive. So sometimes with trauma, the brain can get stuck in overdrive. Sometimes, especially if there's also head trauma or toxic exposure, the brain can completely shut down. And so what do we do? If the brain is working too hard, we're gonna calm it down. Meditation, prayer, hypnosis, calming scents like lavender, or calming supplements like GABA calming support or our magnesium chewables. If the brain is shut down, and I would argue, well, how would you really know unless you look? I mean, that's why we do the brain imaging work we do at Amen Clinics. Exercise can st stimulate it, upbeat music, scents, but different ones like peppermint and eucalyptus, and supplements that are more stimulating to the brain like SAMe, which has good science to boost your mood, focus and energy, which we use a lot uh, to help support attention and focus. And one of my favorite supplements, Brain Boost on the go, which it comes with 10 packets. You put it in a bottle of water, drink it. It's got B6, B12, folate, and theanine. So it's a stimulant without any caffeine. And uh, it's very popular. So taming the wounded dragon um, 
So we do something called EMDR. It's a specific psychological treatment for trauma. It stands for eye movement desensitization and reprocessing. You bring up the trauma. They have your eyes going back and forth. And what that helps is bring it up and then calm it down. I actually published a study on police officers who had been involved in shootings and uh, were off work. And they all went back to work after just an average of eight sessions. Journaling the trauma. So I did EMDR with the goat story. Um, I also journaled it from my side, but also from my dad's side. Uh, bilateral hemisphere stimulation, something called havening, which I write about in the book. And then one of the meditations is I am safe, I am here, this is now. So the dragons from the past, especially the wounded dragons, are not controlling my mind. And then the grief and loss dragon, um, which is so common during this pandemic. Um, and... And it's not just losing someone, although I know many of you have lost people. Um, you know, we've lost more people to COVID-19 than died in World War II, more Americans. Um, it's sad. It's horrifying. Um, grief and loss comes from losing someone important, like my dad, uh, through death, divorce, maybe a partner with dementia, empty nest, uh, our daughter Chloe. Uh, so I have four, and this is, you know, my youngest who, you know, her mother is very concerned about her mother's mental state when Chloe leaves because they're so connected. It can also come from losing something important like your health or like your business, or a job, or finances, um, which is common during the pandemic. It can be from the, an attachment to ideas, to an identity, to you didn't live up to your level of success you had in mind for yourself. Um, you have a handicapped child, and you mourn the loss of you, what you thought who you thought that child might be. Um, I already said I lost my dad in May, and he was just one of my best friends. And I always say, with grief, don't wait to start healing. And I remember um, the first month he died, I'd sit in my chair and just cry. While I listen Morning. to Give his voicemails. Call when you get a chance. I have tangerines, avocados, lemons, orange juice, if you're interested. And grief gets triggered when there's any reminder of the loss. A sight, a song, a routine, making coffee, lifting weights, anniversary, anything, including a day of the week. So I live close to my dad and every Sunday. So let me see how I'm doing with time. So my relationship with my dad was strained until seven years ago, until he was 85. And he, he, he just wasn't nice and belittled me and it was weird because he'd tell everybody else how proud he was of me, except me. But when he was 85, he had mold in his house and developed a chronic cough, then um, heart failure, and then a heart arrhythmia. And he stopped going to work, and he looked depressed. And this is, not, this is someone who would just blatantly tell you, I don't get heart attacks, I give them. Um, but he looked at me one Sunday and he said, I'm sick of being sick. What do you want me to do? 
And then he just did everything I asked him to do because he's so stubborn. And over six months, he lost 40 pounds. Uh, he started working again, became vibrant. And on every Sunday, I went over his house to work out. And so now, every Sunday, I get triggered and I just remember what it was like. Um, show the slides. And actually, I want you guys to see this. And so just a day of the week can trigger grief. And the reactions can be shock and sadness, denial, anger, guilt, trouble breathing, chest pain. Any of you who've been through grief, you know what's going on. Can't sleep, memory problems. You have to get chest pain uh, you have to get it checked out. That's very important. Now, I often say fix sleep first. Um, and we make put me to sleep, also restful sleep. It's got melatonin, magnesium, 5-HTP, GABA, and theanine, all things that promote healthy sleep. Brain healthy routine. It's so important. Don't give yourself the excuse to hurt yourself. Healing should start as soon as possible. And I often talk about turning around the five stages of grief. So Elizabeth Kubler-Ross talked about the stages of grief from denial, anger, bargaining, depression, and acceptance. And I'm like, there's no rule you have to do these. Um, so rather than denial, admit your loss. My father's gone. Um, rather than anger, work to find peace. Rather than bargaining for something that will not change, stop bargaining. I often say, got this from my friend Byron Katie, argue with reality, welcome to hell. Re-engage with others to avoid depression and refuse to accept prolonged pain as a given. This is the hopeless and helpless dragon. This is the dragon that drives depression. It can be a genetic component to this. Um, often happens when stress is stacked too high, when you try to get better and it doesn't work, something called learned helplessness, um, a pessimistic mindset, or you feel like you have no control. You want to be resilient in the pandemic? Remember these three letters, TLC. See it as temporary? It is temporary. Now, we don't know how long it's going to last, but it's going to be over. See it as local. Yes, it's a global pandemic, but what can you do in your house, in your city? And say the serenity prayer over and over again. I've said it a thousand times during the pandemic. Uh, it's about focusing on what you can control. God grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change, the courage to change the things I can, and the wisdom to know the difference. There's a reason that prayer has been around for a long time. What triggers this dragon? Any reminders of feeling overwhelmed, powerless, or isolated? I have this great exercise I do. Uh, it's a bridging technique. Tell me what you're thinking and feeling. I often, you know, when a patient comes in and they're having a hard time, tell me what you're thinking and feeling. Um, I talked to a grandmother recently. Um, who just felt panicked um, when her daughter was letting the baby cry. And uh, I had her just go, what are you thinking and feeling out of control? 
when's the first time you felt like that? And she went back in her mind to she was three and her parents had left her with her grandmother for a couple of months and she felt completely out of control, lost, isolated, alone, abandoned. And using those techniques, which I talk about in your brain is always listening, can just be so helpful to you. How do people react with this dragon? It's depression, sadness, negativity, hopelessness, helplessness, worthlessness. They feel terrible. They even wonder if life is worth living. They have a very high negativity bias. So what helps this dragon? Your diet, unbelievable, the research on if you get your food right, your mood is right. Uh, eliminate processed foods, increase colorful fruits and vegetables. There is a linear correlation between the number of fruits and vegetables you eat a day and your level of happiness up to the number eight. And so at BrainMD, we make something called NeuroGreens. It actually should have been called Neuro Rainbow because it's made, it's just a wonderful powder I put in my shake every morning with green things and blue things and purple things and yellow things and orange things, all powders from organic vegetables and fruits. It's amazing. Um, so many ways to tame this dragon from food to exercise, certain supplements like happy saffron, um, omega-3 fatty acids, bright light therapy. At BrainMD, we have a bright light that I created that's just wonderful. 30 minutes in the morning, it's been shown to support your mood, your focus, your energy and your sleep. I'm a huge fan of saunas. One study in JAMA, found just taking one sauna had antidepressant effects, scents like lavender, learning how to kill the ants. And a treatment that we developed here at Amen Clinics based on positive psychology called positivity bias training, where you start every day with today is going to be a great day. And you finish every day with what went well today. Now, I told you the worst day of last year for me was May 5th when my dad died. I had this conflicted relationship until, goodness, I was like 60 years old. And then all of a sudden he becomes one of my best friends. I mean, it's like my dad, my mom, and my wife. And the day my dad died, it was a terrible day. I was actually on my way over to take him to the doctor when I got a panic call from my mom. And when I went to bed that night, because it is my habit, I went, I said a prayer, and I went, what went well today? And then I almost took a panicked breath because I'm like, no, you can't do that today. But I always have an attitude problem with myself. I'm like, what do you mean I can't do that today? It's what I do. And I just let my mind think about what went well that day. And there was just this amazing interaction between my mom and police officer Darling of the Newport Beach Police Department. And I for the last year, I've been working with the Newport Beach Police Department on creating a brain-healthy police department, needed now more than ever before because of the societal unrest. And Officer Darling was just so good with my mom. And he's like, we have to do an investigation when anybody dies at home. And she looked at him and she said, do you think I was cheating on him? Do you think I murdered him? <laughs> it was so funny. Um, and my mom did it in a deadpan way. I knew she wasn't serious. And then I remember the hundreds of texts I got from my friends. Because when you're one of seven, you know, people find out these things immediately. Um, the texts I got from my friends, from my dad's friends. 
And then I sat with him before the coroner took him away and just held his hand. And I just remember how soft it was. And I went to sleep, you know, on a night that I usually wouldn't have slept. Because these practices to be well are not just for when you're well. My wife often says you don't get in the shower to, you don't, how does she say this? I'm going to mess this up. You don't get in the shower clean. These practices are for a pandemic. These practices are for good times and they're for bad times. And we need them now more than ever. And then focusing on gratitude and appreciation. Where you bring your attention always determines how you feel. I would say I'm sorry for the tears, but I'm not sorry. Because it's just part of the process and it's normal. And the last dragon we'll talk about tonight is the grief is the ancestral dragon. I love this dragon. This is my favorite dragon. And this dragon tells us we are suffering and it actually has nothing to do with us. That we are holding someone else's pain. That trauma actually got written into our genetic code. This is my grandfather. And he came to the United States as a teenager. And when he was 19, his brother borrowed his sister's car and apparently wasn't a good driver and ended up colliding with an on coming train and was killed. And my grandfather never drove and held a grudge against his sister his whole life. And this happened, this was written into his genetic code before he had my dad, who then, you know, was involved in creating me. And I think some of the anxiety I hold is not just mine, that some of it's his. And Tana, my wife, her grandmother grew up in um, what is now Lebanon during World War I when there was a great famine. And she was lost in the mountains for three days. And I often wondered why Tana Tana was preparing for the pandemic um, ever since we got married 13 years ago. <laughs> and often I'm like, don't I take good care of you? We live in Newport Beach. We have plenty. And oh no, something bad is going to happen. And um, her grandmother wrote the famine into her genetic code. There's a whole research on this that I talk about in the book, how sometimes your issues are from another generation. And knowing that is so important. So it's based on a concept called epigenetics, where we actually inherit the fears, worries, even prejudices of our ancestors. The triggers are often unknown and any reminders of stressful times stored in our genes. So I write about one person whose mother was raped when she was in her early 20s and just never slept well after that. And when she got to her early 20s, she just never slept well. And, you know, we came to believe it had ancestral origins. And how it causes you to react is you have anxiety for little to no reason. It's just not yours. You engage in behaviors you just can't explain. And taming this dragon is really about knowing your family history. 
So I didn't know that story about my grandfather until I was writing this book and I spent hours talking to my dad about when he was little and about his dad and his mom. And that's just really important information for me to have. Now, you want to be a good listener. Uh, don't judge it. They're a different generation. It's a different time. Um, being a good listener is so important. So talk to your parents, grandparents, family, or the family historian about the past to see if any of their issues relate to yours and then consciously, purposefully work to separate your issues from your ancestors. So I have lots of questions that people have submitted. What am I doing? I'm doing great for time. That means my frontal lobes are working. Um, before I do, let me just tell you one more time, if you pre-order the book, uh, we will give you these four really cool free gifts. Um, the Your Brain is Always Listening playbook that we developed on, you know, the work we do at Amen Clinics, the science of change and tiny habits, six really simple feel better fast techniques, what sense work, uh, a great meditation that can help you. Um, a section on knowing your dragons. Probably many of you have already taken the Know Your Dragons questionnaire, um, knowyourdragons.com, a guide to supplementing your brain, um, the special event with me on March 17th, only for people who pre-ordered the book, um, the hypnosis audios, which I think you'll really love. If you've never been hypnotized, hypnosis, it's not magic. It's just getting your brain into an open, receptive state. Um, it doesn't open your mind to bad things. It helps to direct your mind in a healthy way. And then the coupon for a free bottle of Happy Saffron. You have to pay for the shipping, but it's a $49.95 value. So it's like over $100 value just by pre-ordering the book. Uh, and if you pre-order it, and hopefully you'll like it, leave us a wonderful review on Amazon. I'd be so grateful. Um, so order it anywhere great books are sold. And then when you do, go to yourbrainisalwayslistening.com, enter your order number, and instantly get access to your free bonuses. Okay. When should someone consider getting a spec scan? When what you're doing isn't working, um, or if you've really struggled and no one's ever looked at your brain, remember those four circles. Um, I'm going to put them back up. It'll take me just a minute to find them. Um, I always think about this. And no matter what I'm doing, no matter where I'm at, it's I'm always thinking about my patients in these circles. So Jeff, put up the circles. Um, if you want to understand someone, their biology, so in my case, your brain, your psychology, your mind, the social circle, how you get along with others, and the spiritual circle, why do you care? How would I ever know what's going on in your brain unless I looked? And uh, so I think you should get a scan. If you have a family history of dementia, you should probably get a scan by the time you're 40. Um, if your memory is worse than it was 10 years ago, probably a good idea to get a scan. If you've struggled with depression and you've tried a couple of medications and they're not working, you should get a scan. I mean, how do we know if it's head trauma or toxic exposure, your brain works too hard or not hard enough? Uh, all other medical specialists look, psychiatrists guess. And 
I work really hard. I've been working really hard for decades to change that. As a profession, if you are concerned about your mood, about your behavior, um, about your thinking, somebody should be looking at your brain. Um, question number two, are all supplements the same? No, and that's one of the reasons the supplement industry has a bad rap, because they're not. Quality really matters. And I've been criticized because I own a supplement company. So I own a clinic, and I own clinics, and I own a supplement company. Why? Um, when I first started looking at scans in 1991, some of the medications I was taught to prescribe were toxic, caused the brain to look toxic, which horrified me. I mean, it really upset me because I remember first do no harm, use the least toxic, most effective treatments. And I'd always had a bent for skills, not just pills. And, and I think of your brain is always listening as a book that really helps you get skills to manage your mind. But I never wanted to hurt my patients, and I, so I started thinking about reading, researching, uh, taking courses on nutritional supplements for mental health. And at the time, St. John's Wort already had good research evidence to support uh, your mood. Sammy. Good research evidence. Omega-3 fatty acids, B6, B12, folate. And so initially, I would just send people to the health food store. But then there was that issue of quality. And as I learned more, I wanted my own formulas, like gabacalmine or happy saffron or serotonin mood support or brain and memory power boost based on the research I knew and I knew I could compare, I could control the quality. These are supplements I take. Like I make a shake in the morning. If you go to my Instagram, at Doc Amen, you can actually watch me make the shake. Um, BrainMD makes uh, vanilla and chocolate protein powder. So you start with the protein powder. Um, from Costco, I get organic blueberries. I should have made a slide of this. Um, put in NeuroGreens or Bright Minds powder, which is a combination of two products, so it actually saves me eight capsules. Great multiple vitamin, brain and memory power boost at a full dose, and happy, not happy mushrooms, <laughs> smart mushrooms. I wanted to call it happy mushrooms. My team would not let me. But smart mushrooms, which actually has six mushrooms, including lion's mane, turkey tail, reishi, cordyceps, um, in therapeutic doses. And I blended it. It tastes amazing. Our protein powder has no added sugar. It has like two grams of sugar in it, the whole thing. And it's spectacular, and there's no suffering. So anyways, that's why I own a supplement company. Um, is it easier to tame the dragons on a brain-healthy program? Absolutely. Think of the dragons really coming from your limbic or your emotional brain. If your frontal lobes are sleepy, the dragons take over and they control you. Strengthen your frontal lobe, exercise, nutritional supplements, um, sometimes hyperbaric oxygen therapy if we have to repair the brain, sometimes medication. It's absolutely essential. Get your brain right. Your mind will follow. Um, the last chapter of the book is on the dragon tamer, which is basically how to strengthen the front part of your brain to control all the dragons. Uh, question five, how to best deal with the feelings of stagnation that the pandemic has caused? You have a historic opportunity to get well. Like never before, if you can put the right processes 
in place. If you can start every day with today is going to be a great day. If you can go through your day and ask yourself this one question, it's my favorite tiny habit. Is this good for my brain or bad for it? You can put in an exercise routine. You can learn something new. You can grow. This pandemic is awful for so many. I get it. Um, we've had a fair amount of stress at Amen Clinics with people we love who've died or who've been sickened with the virus. Um, but we've also seen people lose like 50 pounds because rather than moan and treat their anxiety with alcohol and bad food, they're exercising more than they ever have. They're eating better. They're taking the time to get their brain right. So see it as temporary, local, and do what you can. What do you have control? That's where you always want to stay. How can teenagers cope with a friend or a peer who is suicidal? Oh, this, was, this question got to my heart. How to help but not take on the burden. You have to tell the teenager not to be quiet. If somebody shares that in confidence, no matter what, you have to tell an adult. Uh, it's absolutely essential. And if they hate you, it's way better for them to hate you and they are alive than never promise someone that you won't share the confidence. I tell my patients this all the time. It's like whatever we do is confidential, except if I think you're going to hurt yourself or you're going to hurt someone else. So it's very important. And you cannot control. I cannot control if someone decides to make that decision. Um, but you want to be a good listener, give them resources. Uh, it, it's just so important to, to help intervene in those situations. Um, what is your best relationship advice to a long, happy, lasting relationship? Tame your dragons. Buy this book for your partner. Do it together. I love, I, Tana has 10 dragons, so I try not to like poke them. Um, be clear with what you want. Actually, if you go to Laura Cleary's uh, Facebook page today, uh, Laura Cleary is a comedian and an actress. Uh, she's got a gazillion Facebook followers. Uh, she and I have done four videos together. Um, and today they just posted me doing marital therapy with her and her husband, Stephen. And it's hysterical because she's a comedian. Um, and I'm sort of a wannabe comedian. Um, but, you know, one of the first things we did is an exercise called the One Page Miracle. On one piece of paper, write down what you want. And then ask yourself every day, is your behavior getting you what you want? So for me and my wife, uh, who's my best friend, I want a kind, caring, loving, supportive, passionate relationship. Always want that. Don't always feel like that. Little rude thoughts pop up in my head. And if my frontal lobes work right, if the dragon tamer works right, they don't get out. Because I filter, you do not have to say every stupid thing you think. Please don't say everything you think. Jerry Seinfeld said the brain is a sneaky organ. We all have weird, crazy, stupid, sexual, violent thoughts that nobody should ever hear. Um, and so filter your actions, filter your words by what you want. Thoughts on how best to get started on a brain-healthy program. Um, 
read Change Your Brain, Change Your Life. I think you'll love that. Or the book I wrote with Tana, The Brain Warrior's Way. We also have a podcast. We have almost a thousand podcasts we've done. They have 11 and a half million downloads. Uh, I'm really thrilled. It's a great way to start becoming a brain warrior. At Amen University, you can actually take one of our courses, amenuniversity.com. We have a great course called The Brain Warrior's Way. Decreases depression, decreases anxiety, helps with memory, energy. Uh, people lost, I think, on average seven pounds who took the course, and that wasn't the point of the course. Um, why is it... When facing memories of the past, it's more difficult to kill the ants because you haven't tamed the dragons. Um, but you want to be a master ant killer. And there is an exercise in your brain is always listening um, where I ask you, if you write down a hundred of your worst thoughts, and Jimmy did that for me, and he was serious. And there's these five questions I learned from my friend Byron Katie on how to kill them. He did that exercise with a hundred of his worst thoughts. Yeah, it took him a couple of weeks. But he has a skill now for the rest of his life where he doesn't have to entertain the nonsense that goes on in his head. So you want to tame the dragons, but also be really good at killing the ants. What is the best way to calm an anxious mind? Have it as a goal. Be purposeful. Start either hypnosis or meditation. I'm going to teach you something I teach in the book. Um, it's a very specific breathing pattern. It's so stinking simple you're going to think it's not going to work. But I told you about my anxious dragon. This thing works so well. Try to breathe with your diaphragm, which means let the energy of breathing go lower in your body. Three seconds in. Hold it for a second. Take six seconds to breathe out. Take twice as long to breathe out as you breathe in. It triggers a parasympathetic response and calms your body. Hold it out for a second. Do that 10 times. Do it four, five, six, seven times a day. And it take like less than 20 minutes. It'll help you so much. Hypnosis, meditation, GABA calming, magnesium chewables, all of those things can help. Any advice on how to get over lingering anger, sadness after someone significantly hurts you? In the book, uh, Under Grief and Loss, I talk about reach for forgiveness. There's actually a specific program to do that. Um, recall what happened. Empathize with the other person. That's the hard thing, like I had to do with my dad and the goat. Well, you know, the goat was eating his roses, which were so important to him. Altruistically, give the gift of forgiveness. Commit to it and hold on to it. So important. There are many forgiveness exercises. That's just one I love. How to think positively in any situation. I actually don't want you to think positively in any situation. Like someone's just offered you the third drink. It's like, why are you trying to hurt me? <laughs> That's not a time to think positive. I always want you thinking accurately. That's what's important. Accurate thinking. Um, is there a way to train your mind to not think of the worst case scenario every time something goes wrong? And you wrote it just right. You have to train your mind to look for what's right rather than just for what's wrong. And it's a muscle. So with these psychological exercises, people go, oh, well, it didn't work. Because you did it once. I mean, can you imagine going, I want strong biceps? And, well, I did it once and it didn't work, so I'm not going to do it again. Well, that's sort of insane. It's practices that you have to do 
over and over again. And we have the tiny habits in here, so I try to make it as easy and as simple as possible. Now, over the next couple of weeks, I am going to continue uh, what has basically been daily chats on Instagram and Facebook, going through each of the dragons. And uh, I'm going to talk more about the ancestral dragon tomorrow, but then I'm going to start on the they, them, and other dragons and the bad habit dragons so you can catch me uh, on social media if you need help and you go, oh, I need this kind of help and I want to scan, uh, go to amenclinics.com, uh, call the clinic. Uh, we would just dearly love to help you. We have 40 uh, physicians. Uh, they're all wonderful. I've been involved in training them all. We would be honored to help you. Um, you know how I feel about BrainMD. I'm just a huge fan of the supplements, the quality. Um, I'm proud of it, and it's the ones I take every day. Um, and then to get more information, you can get that at amenuniversity.com. Um, Pre-order the book. Get your special gifts. I'm grateful you spent your time with me. Thanks so much. Are you feeling anxious, stressed, depressed, or overwhelmed? Who isn't with the current pandemic and other recent stressful events? I've spent my life healing people's brains and I am here to tell you that it is possible to regain a sense of calm and control over your mind. I'm Dr. Daniel Amen, a double board certified psychiatrist, founder of Amen Clinics, host of 15 popular shows about the brain on public television, and a 12 time New York Times bestselling author. My books have been successful because I empower people to take ownership over their minds by making neuroscience easy to understand and offer you practical solutions I use with my own patients to help them have a better brain, a better mind, and a better life. All of my best strategies are now available to you, and my new book, Your Brain is Always Listening. Tame the hidden dragons that control your happiness, habits, and hangups. It comes out March 2nd, and when you order now, you'll get some very special bonuses, including my best training and support resources to help you immediately feel happier, calmer, and more in control of your own emotions. Your brain is literally always listening and responding to the hidden dragons that breathe fire on your emotional brain and unless you recognize and deal with them, they can steal your happiness, spoil your relationships, and sabotage your health. Your brain is always listening. We'll teach you how to tame the dragons from the past that ignite your most painful emotions, such as the abandoned, invisible, or insignificant dragons. This is one of my primary dragons the inferior flawed dragons, the anxious and wounded dragons, the should and shaming dragons, the grief and loss and hopeless and helpless dragons, and my favorite, the ancestral dragons, where the issues you have are in fact not your issues, but belong to past generations. For each of these dragons, I give you their origin story, what triggers them, how they cause you to react, and most importantly, how to tame each one of them. The book also explores how your dragons are always battling other people's dragons. This can really mess up your relationships. I'm going to teach you how to recognize and control them in relationships. A big challenge that came about with the pandemic relates to the addicted dragons. So this book will give you a brand new 12-step program to tame them based on the latest neuroscience. By ordering the book now, you'll receive four free gifts, including a special playbook of five worksheets that can help you be happier now, 
access to a two-hour event with me personally where I answer questions from only people who pre-ordered the book. You'll also get access to Magnificent Mind with Medical Hypnosis, which contains six hypnosis sessions I do for you, just like I do for my patients, including ones for anxiety, sleep, chronic pain, weight loss, smoking, and peak performance. And my favorite gift to you is a free coupon for a bottle of Happy Saffron at BrainMD. You just pay the shipping, but this is a $49.95 value and is my favorite nutritional supplement, which I take every day. The research on Saffron is spectacular, and I want you to have it when you pre-order or order the book. Your brain is always listening. I am thrilled to be your guide and show you how to tame your dragons so that you can have the happiness, peace, and the relationships you deserve.